Hi everyone, it's June 28th, Wednesday, and you're here at the Chaos DEI Working Group weekly call. Um, just a quick reminder, these calls are under the Chaos Code of Conduct. So um, I know you all know this already, but um, just keep that in mind as you interact with us. And also the purpose of this meeting here is to talk about DEI related things, diversity, equity, and inclusion either inside chaos or um, our metrics or badging. We also talk about badging in this meeting as well, both event badging and project badging. So we have a lot um, usually, but today we don't have a ton on the agenda. So if there are things that you all would like to talk about, we are super happy to do that as well because we got plenty of time. So I will share my screen so you all can just see how you're how we're doing today? I can I can write a project badging update. Okay, that'd be great. I'll put that on here too. Project badging update. Ooh, date update. There we go. I am. Uh, this whole week has been so busy. I don't know why. I I don't know why, but yeah. I I usually yeah. have a a five meeting a day limit. Like that's kind of my limit. After that, I'm just yeah, I'm wordless. Yeah. I'm a mess. And tomorrow I hit that that five limit. <laughs> so yeah, Friday I'll be like, phew, because chaos yeah. usually takes a break on Fridays from meetings. So that's good. Yeah, I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting kind of uh, yeah. There seems to be a lot of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of meetings. Um, okay, and if you need, here's the minutes too. We can drop that back in chat just for anybody who does need them again. This is the document where we're working from today. Um, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to kind of give everybody a quick update and talk about this. We are um, down here. We talk about this a little more. I'll just copy this. We are putting together um, what we call a chaos onboarding course. So um, what this is going to do is for anyone who hasn't heard about this or doesn't know about it. Um, basically, we're taking all of our chaos materials or some docs videos the things that we've worked on in the past kind of putting them together in like a, a linear plan a linear path of learning it so it'll be like um like a you're taking a course like at a university or, or at a school so you'll watch one video and then you'll get to move on to the next one and read one doc and you'll get to move on to the next one so here's kind of what we're thinking, um, just some ideas about what we think newcomers would want to know and need to know. Um, I, I see a few new faces in here, new-ish <laughs> faces. So um, as a newcomer to chaos, your input on this would be super, super helpful of like what would be good to know and things that you don't know or things you struggled with trying to find in the chaos project. Um, that would be super helpful. So. I'm going to drop this in here as well in the chat if you just want to take a look at it um, and if you have comments feel free to drop them in um, anything that you think might be useful. Uh, we also had talked about um, taking these are going to be like five to seven minute long videos so it's really like we used to do um, a giant one hour chaos onboarding call every month. And it was just too much information at once. It was just because, you know, chaos, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here. So um, we had gotten that feedback. And so we thought maybe it would be better in kind of digestible chunks of like five to seven minutes, not a big deal. You can just watch this at your own pace, go through them when you have time. And um, so then like by at the end, then you would kind of have a really good feel for chaos. So um, we had also talked about writing these scripts out and getting um, some of our other folks, not just me, <laughs> to do all these, or Ruth, if you all know Ruth, um, not just the two of us doing it, but really make it a, a community effort. So um, if you're interested in, in participating in, in recording any of these, it would literally just be re you know reading right off a script. Um, that would be great. So you can just reach out to us and um, and just let us know that you want to, to help out with some of this stuff. So is it one video per? Per module, yeah. So like so, this so. right here would be five to seven minutes. And this would be five to seven minutes. And this, and so on and so forth. I think we put your name down on some of these for the software part. But you don't have to, uh, 
record it, Sean. You can just record, like write a script out if, or um, just read a script that somebody else wrote and give your input. I think, I think um, if there's a standard, probably the most important thing, like I could do it for sure. I think it, it would be important that we have sort of a, I don't know, some kind of instruction about how the slide decks should look, how the script should be created. Yeah. Um, I don't know, some, some sort of somewhat consistent, I don't know, it's, it's going to be different people, but some degree of consistency in the structure, like um, introductions, introduce yourself, provide an oat, like a, probably an overview slide of what's going to be covered, and then markers within your video indicating that, you know, where you are in the topics. So if you list like four topics that you're going to cover, that, that you just signal to the, in the video that we're going from topic one to topic two. Little things like that, I think, help make videos a little bit easier to follow. Um, and it also gives us a very, very loose structure so that when somebody watches KS Video 1, KS Video 4 or 2 isn't, you know, completely different. Yes, that is an excellent point that no one has made yet. So thank you very much, Sean. That is an excellent point. Um, so I really have it be a comprehensive um, like a, a package. You're right. Um, yeah. Comprehensive. There we go. Uh, I love that. I love that. Um, slide templates and like a, some script templates. Yeah, like very high level. Like it, you yeah. Get, I don't want to get like overly structured. No, but I, it's completely, you're completely right. Cause we don't, I mean, that would be really confusing if somebody came in and they're watching these videos and they're all over the place and they all look super different and you might not think you're where you should be. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, yeah. Um, excellent point. There's another half of this I should also mention, which is, um, helping folks join open source in general. And I know the Chaos Africa team has, um, they're building out a full curriculum and, you know, it's going to be pretty, pretty comprehensive. Um, we had talked before about maybe there is a need still for more, uh, for one that's um, maybe for folks in US and Europe. We were thinking there should be maybe one for Latin America with our new upcoming Latin America region. Same thing with Balkans, um, maybe Asia Pacific too. So it would be kind of regional specific. So um, I think we could, you know, pull from certain resources and, and some some of that curriculum would be kind of the same across, but um, there are things, you know, there are challenges and um, concerns in Africa that are different than maybe Latin America. Um, so I think we can start to do that also. So if anybody on this call is has experience in open source and wants to also contribute to the one that we're just offering as a part of like overall chaos, um, that would be also be great is what I'm trying to say. In a very long winded way. I, I get what you're saying. though. Yeah, because we do have a lot of people. Um, how about newbies? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think definitely. Rhoda, to your question, I think that um, as a, are you new to open source as well? Okay. Um, yeah, I think that would be helpful, especially as it's getting built. Um, you know, you can kind of be one of our testers <laughs> that goes through it and, and reads it and you can give us a lot of feedback on like, yeah, this makes sense. No, this, I have no idea what this means. You know, that would be really, really, really helpful, I think. So maybe not right away, but I think as it's getting built, just to be that that person that kind of helps us make sure that it's understandable and um, accessible, and that you know it, people really can can learn from it. Yeah, that would be great. Rhoda, I also love that you um, joined the Badgers team as well. <laughs> like I love, I love that you did that. You came to the uh, badging and. Um, I should put that on the agenda, actually, that we had new, some new badgers. I'll just do that as I'm thinking about it. <laughs> new event. 
I can spell. That'd be great. So yeah, so that's that we're working on in progress. And again, feel free to jump in this doc. Anybody put any comments you have um, or suggestions um, anywhere in here. It's an open doc. It's kind of how we do things at Chaos. We just have a doc and people just kind of all collaborate in that one place mostly for these for documents like this. Any other questions about any of that? Okay. Um, this is just kind of a an update on um, what we're doing at FOSSI. So FOSSI is, uh, I think it's, uh, I think this is the, FOSSI is an upcoming conference in the United States. Um, I think it's basically just around free and open source software. It's a smallish conference. It's the first year they're doing it here. Um, so we are going to have a chaos booth, which we've never done before. So that's exciting. Um, so we're going to have a sign, a big um, retractable sign. We have a table, we have stickers, and then we're going to be doing a raffle at the event where we um, we're going to ask people some questions about kind of what how they're thinking about open source metrics and health metrics and um, things like that. And so they'll have to fill that out to join the raffle. And right now it looks like it looks like we're um, the leading prize is a giant Lego globe that is super cool <laughs> that I think I really I really want to keep but I obviously can't. Um, <laughs> but I was like yeah this is cool I might I want one for my house. Um, so we just thought it was kind of cool that represents like the global nature of chaos and um, and then someone else had an idea that we like whoever's in the chaos booth should like work to put that Lego model together and then, then that's the prize like here's a here's a Lego globe that we at chaos put our heart and soul into putting together for you. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe people would want a brand new one I don't know so I guess we'll we'll figure that out but. Um, so that's what's going on there. And um, the second half of that is uh, just to let people know um, myself and also um, a chaotic named Justin Flory, who is kind of in and out of the chaos community. Um, we are giving it, but he's also runs the Fedora community. We are giving a talk on um, just onboarding and how you can help your community um, feel more welcome and um, more up to speed with things quicker and better than just having your contributing .md file, which is what a lot of open source projects do, and then they just kind of stop there. So um, we're just giving just some some of the ideas that we've tried in our communities and what's worked and what hasn't. Um, so we're just giving that talk in the in the DEI track there. I don't know if Fossey has a virtual component. I guess we could look real quick. Oh. Maybe that's not the right. Maybe that's not the right. Um, okay, well, we'll just not go there. I don't know. What's somebody can look up what the right URL is because I don't think that's it. I don't think that's, that's it. it. That's actually, you just have to move over to advanced and you will see. It. Just do it. Just go for it. Advanced. All yeah. right. Yeah. I'm see, we see two pieces here. Oh, because their their certificate expired. That's kind of funny. <laughs> Um, does it say they have a virtual? Oh, I don't think they do. Oh, that's kind of not great. Oh, well, maybe that will change. I guess they have a little bit of time to do that, but that's happening. Um, any, any questions about that? No, nope. okay. Uh, I think they're actually, sorry, I'm gonna go back to this for a second. I think just uh, if anybody is gonna be there, there are some other chaotics that are gonna be around. I think, uh, I think Dawn has a, ha has a talk. I don't know what, ta what day hers is. Dawn Foster, there we go. Contributor growth strategies mm -hmm. for OSS projects. Um, so there's Don. I think Sophia might have a talk somewhere. Um, I don't know. Yep, there's Sophia. 
can we combat maintainer burnout with proactive metrics? So thankfully they didn't put us all at the same time. Ildico is also a chaotic, the hidden challenges of inclusive collaboration. Uh, Saeed also does some work with our um, open science context group, working group. So yeah, there's a lot of, oh, there's Enoch. Yay! I wonder if he, I should ask him about this. I saw this yesterday, actually. I meant to ask him if he recorded it or what he's doing for that. So yay. Well, I'm so excited to see him there. Stephen Jacobs also is a, is a chaotic. <laughs> so we're pretty much everywhere. We're pretty much just running the whole show. <laughs> and then there's ours, and I think that might be it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's like a big chaos con with maybe a few other people. <laughs> so okay, cool. I think that's it. Um, Sean, you want to give a quick project badging project badging update? I can talk. Yeah. So project project badging is going along really well. Uh, chaos Africa team is finishing up the design and implementation of their design so that there's a smooth workflow through through the entire process. And um, Enoch and I uh, are working together to get the reports generated um, directly through the badging site. So we have the scanning working, we have the design complete, and now we're, uh, we're working on getting things all put together. So it's uh, it's it's uh, coming along really nicely, and we expect to do a pilot. Um, I believe did we are we meeting on Monday? I can't remember if we decided uh, to. Skip I'm glad that. you said that because I, I neglected to reach out to those other folks. So um, I'm I suspect a lot of people will not be around in the U.S. on Monday this yeah. week. Yeah, and I think both of those projects are based in the U.S. So maybe we should shoot for the week after. Yeah, the the tenth, right? I, yeah, I, I think, I think so. Okay. Okay, perfect. And for those who don't know, um, the project badging is a little bit different uh, than our event badging, which um, we're working with the all in project as well on that, which is um, kind of being run by GitHub right now. So, um, so there's been a lot of collaboration with GitHub and just a lot of moving pieces to the project badging. As we, we mentioned yesterday in the event badging orientation that, um, you know, projects are a lot more complicated because <laughs> yeah. there, there's a lot more going on. There's like more, you know, communication channels, there's communities and they're not, you know, finite. Whereas an event is like one and done, you know, they, the event happens and then it's over. And then the next time the event happens, they can apply for a new badge. So, there's a lot, uh, yeah. a lot more going on, a lot more complexities to projects, and also a lot more of them too, right, Sean? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And uh -huh. I, I, I just, I just looked outside because I heard like this loud boom, and I was trying to determine if it was a gunshot or thunder, but it was a thunder. Oh, I'm. I'm we, we don't have gunshots here very often, so <laughs> it was like this so loud. Oh I wow! Probably oh, here, but yeah, it's uh, apparently a thunderstorm is underway. Okay, so if you um, if we see a flash and you're gone, then we'll know that yeah, it's a lightning I, strike to Sean's. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my, my battery backup should hold, but unless yeah, a lightning strike might take me out. Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, actually, hang on one second, Ijeoma. We're gonna finish project badging, and then we'll I'll talk about event badging. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure there was no questions about project badging. Okay, um, so I just wanted to say, give a quick shout out. We have two, definitely two new event badgers. We have three others that um, may be joining as badgers. So um, these are the folks that um, will help us review the applications for badges for events. So um, basically in a nutshell, what the event badging system is, is or initiative is, is an event can fill out an application and tell us how they're attending to different DEI metrics that chaos has developed. So things like code of conduct, the family friendliness at the event. Um, I can't remember what the other ones are right now, but um, there's a there's a list. So they just have to tell us how they're attending to them. And then we have two folks two chaotic chaotics that look through those applications and just verify that what the 
um, event organizer said is actually true and that that information is publicly available on the website and um, then can um, they just go through a checklist and then they check off that yes. Um, Sean, is that you? Are you opening something? I'm not. That, well, as far as I know, it's not me. Hmm. I hear something. Do you guys hear that? Oh, it's gone. Okay. Um, yeah, yesterday it was Lucy, my dog, snoring through the whole meeting, which she's snoring again. So if you hear that, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> she snores really loud. Um, anyway, the um, so when the event badgers go through that application, they just check off the list that yes, this is true. Yes, this, 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 this. And then the badging bot, which Enoch works on, it will go through the whole application and tally up how many checks that event got and it will create a badge and someone can get a um, bronze, uh, they don't have bronze, silver, gold, silver, pen, passing, no. or pending. Those are the four, gold, silver, pa pending, or passing for events. Those are our Right, four. and it's, it's gold, silver, no, it's no, it's bronze, silver, gold, platinum. Platinum um, for projects, yeah. For projects, right. A little yeah. bit different. Um, so anyway, so we have, so project badging doesn't have really manual intervention at this point. Um, it's it's going to be mostly automated, but event badging does have those two reviewers that physically take the time to look through these applications. So yesterday we had a quick orientation to bring on some new, um, some new folks. Rhoda, who is in the call today, is one of those folks. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and we uh, are, I'm, I'm happy to do another orientation in JAMA, if you would like to be one of our reviewers, um, we would love that because we can always use more. We always have folks who are, um, you know, joining and then kind of taking a break and then coming back and taking a break. So it would be fantastic. Yay. Awesome. I will link. So, oh, Henrietta too. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to put a, an action item here for me. Um, I will post, so we have a form you can fill out, which I don't have a link to right now. It's in the badging Slack. Um, post the form for interest. And then, uh, are you all in the badging um, channel? Sorry, Slack channel, badging. Okay, if you join that, I will um, post a link to the interest form and then the three of us can get together and just figure out a day and time that works for us and we can go through the orientation. So, um, why isn't this working? If that would be good. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, how can I join the badging channel? Because um, from my end here, I can't see it. I just have a few channels here. Just the general channel, Chaos Africa, newcomers and random. Okay. So, Is somebody in there can post that link to badging? You can also search for channels, I think, but I don't know how to do that in Slack. I think there's a way to search for channels or like show all channels or something like that. Maybe. There, yeah, I have I have actually had to do that recently. Okay. I, yes, I think I've seen it. Let me join. It's, okay, it's, perfect. It is, it is one of those things, though. It's not a immediately obvious feature. I, I, I know I always have to look for it. Yeah, I just joined. Awesome. Okay, so I'll drop that form in there and then you all can fill it out. And I will get with you. Let me just make a note over here. So what I've done before is at the very bottom of the list of channels, there's a plus button that says add channels. And from there, you can browse channels. And any channels that you haven't joined, you can, you'll get a join button when you hover over it. Yeah, and I should just also mention, you all are welcome to join any channel at Chaos that you see that sounds interesting to you. So don't feel weird by just joining a random channel that you want to join that because it looked interesting. I think there's one also for this group, which you would be also helpful if you want to join, which is just WGDEI. Our working group channels usually do start with WG. Yeah, um, so I just do those. Awesome. Yeah. I think the uh, the only channels that are private are the are the ones that deal with sensitive data. 
So yeah. those are the ones that you may have to ask to, to join. Yeah, good point. Uh, but, the, but those are very, those are usually very specific. Yeah, and they're usually just for something like uh, ad hoc kind of meeting or, or there's like an admin one for like Slack stuff and, and things like that. So yeah, we try to be as transparent as possible and keep it keep open as much as we possibly can. So yeah, if there's anybody else who wants to um, get that orientation, even just to learn more about it, it's not a commitment. <laughs> so if you come to the orientation, it's definitely not a commitment. Um, but if you would like to, you can feel free to fill that form out also in the badging channel. And I will include you in, well as we're trying to find a date. I should also say it's about um, a 15 to 20 minute um, commitment, maybe once a month, maybe, maybe twice, but I try to just do like once a month if I can, depending on how many applications we get in. So it's not a huge time commitment, but it is a really great way to contribute to chaos. And also you don't have to know how to code. You don't really even have to know much about chaos. Um, it's just kind of making verifying that what the event said was that they're doing that they are actually doing so it's, it's pretty easy. How the metrics are calculated, how do we know they followed through or do we take their word for it, because it looked like a lot to take in at first that's Rhoda's question in chat those are actually really, really good questions, so we typically don't follow up with a an event that has passed to make sure that they. Um, did what they said they do at the event. We kind of, and we're going to do this in project too. We kind of are relying on the community at large to 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 come back to that that um, event and say, you know what, you you got this badge, and here's the because everything happens in GitHub. It's all open and transparent. And so, if an event organizer says that they're doing something, and then they have it on their website, and we check it off. But then it turns out to not be the case at all. We're kind of relying on the community to to flag that and to, to go back to that event and say, you know what, you said you were doing this and you didn't do this at all. And that's a problem. So we, we try not to get in the middle of that. And we are definitely taking their word for it in most cases. And in fact, some cases we're we're kind of having to take their word for it that they're an event organizer themselves unless it's on the website, we don't have a good way to verify that. And that's kind of a little bit of a, a gap in our, our badging program, to be perfectly honest. Um, so we kind of have to take it at their word that yes, they are actually an organizer of this event. And um, so it, there is a lot of, it's kind of a, a lot of faith, <laughs> a lot of faith involved. And we are trying to be their partner, not be their judge, not say you're bad if you're not doing something, um, but we just want to kind of be their partner and help them understand the way that they're looking at diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the way that they, they view that and prioritize that in their events. And when you say how the metrics are calculated, can you tell me more about that, that part of your question? So while Rhoda's typing her response, if anybody has any other questions about event badging, um, especially those who maybe have expressed a little bit of interest in being a badger. Okay. Um, well, well um, Rhoda, if you, you know, again, if you have other questions too, you can absolutely ask in badging or ask me after this meeting too. That's completely fine, completely valid. We're always around to, to answer any questions anybody has, so. Does anybody have any other topics to talk about today? Dan is also interested in being an badger, okay. I wish I had that form handy. I can find it. I'm gonna stop sharing for a second, and I'll make, I'll just drop it in in this chat also, so that um, in case you're not in badging or in case you missed it, 
you'll have that readily available. Copy link, okay. So here's the link you can fill out. It just asks you some basic information about yourself. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll put it in the minutes here too. So that way, um, and also I should say, Rhoda, when you get your first um, application, we're happy to kind of go through that with you too. Like, I don't feel like you're just, you know, out there on your own. We just kind of passed it off to you. <laughs> it's like, good luck, have fun. You know, it's not like that at all. We're happy to kind of walk through it with you and, and do it together. If that would be better, if you would feel more, more comfortable with that, we're, we're more than happy to do that also. And that goes for anybody, anybody who's a new badger. It's been a, it's been a little while since I went through that badging orientation, but my recollection is that a lot of my questions were answered just by going through that orientation. That, uh, and the process is outlined fairly uh, straightforwardly on how to do it. So, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel nervous about uh, 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 becoming a badger. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. And we'd go through a demo one too with everybody, so you can kind of see what the process looks like and and all of that. And also, just as an aside, for those who have heard about the badging website project that Kingsley and Enoch are working on in Chaos Africa, that directly ties into this. So just even going through that orientation so you understand more about the badging process and the whole program, like that would also be helpful if you had an interest in working on the badging website piece, like having that understanding of how that process goes would be super helpful for you, I think. All right, I don't think we have anything else on our agenda. Does anybody have anything else they want to ask or, or bring up or talk about? Oh, wait, okay, here, Rhoda asked her question. I was referring to the different metrics and requirements, some of which includes Q&A, but I got the part where it's partnership and trust-based. Yes, please, we we'll definitely appreciate that, okay. Yeah, so the, um, so the, the metrics that we use for this event badging are definitely metrics that are not easily attainable from like an API. So the metrics really are mostly around self-reflection and um, taking the time to think through how they're, how are they attending to family friendliness and documenting that and making it publicly available. So like they're never going to get like a number like, oh, you're a family friendliness number on a scale, you're a, at a six. Like we're not doing that part at all. We don't judge it in that way. We don't assign any values to anything like that. We just basically are saying, yes, you're doing family friendliness or no, you're not. You don't have anything around family friendliness at all. So we're trying to kind of just help them think about things. And it is it is just a yes, no kind of a, of a thing. Like, do you have a code of conduct? Yes, you get a check. <laughs> is it publicly available? Yes, you get a check. Does it have... Um, the what's considered inappropriate behavior and expectations for behavior in it. Yes, you get a check. So it's things like that where you're just really verifying that all of these things are true or else they don't have them for whatever reason. And that's also fine. You know, that's also okay. It goes into the process. Because not every every event is going to have a lot of resources, you know, so um, like not every event can provide an extra room for nursing parents to go in and nurse their children. You know, some conferences can, like a big Linux, you know, conference that has a lot of money that can afford to, to rent that extra room, they're going to be able to provide that. But a smaller conference may not just have those resources to do that. So they can attend to family friendliness in other ways, like not having alcohol at their event and um, making sure on the website they say, please bring your children. All the talks are, you know, kid friendly and um, we have high standards for presentations and slides are appropriate, you know, things like that, like you can do other things. So we're not trying to penalize an event, but we're just trying to help them center diversity, equity, and inclusion and prioritize those things a little more. 
Whew, I talked a whole lot. I'm so sorry. No, it's good. <laughs> I think I I there's like a lot of new people and um... talked the whole time. Um, is it does it, do anybody else have questions about about the event badging or project badging or anything we talked about today? Or if there's other things we want to talk about, we do have a couple of minutes. We have about 11 minutes left. Otherwise, I'll just um, end the meeting and you can have your 10 minutes back. <laughs> Go take a nap or run around the block or something. I, I think um, let's go run around the block. Awesome. I might do that. It's actually a nice day. So <laughs> I might it's not raining here, it. but yeah, maybe I won't run around the block. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't go outside, Sean. Yeah, probably <laughs> not. <laughs> Definitely don't wear your like headphones or some electric thing. Okay. No. Anyway, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day and we'll see you here next week. Same time, same place. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.